And here we are in the heart of Greektown, Astoria, New York. This is one of the most diverse communities in the world. It's so diverse that National Geographic came here and did a whole documentary on it. Why all these wonderful cultures live in harmony and peace and love together for so many years. And one of the first cultures that came here were the Greek Americans. And I'm here with two wonderful Greek Americans that uh, are doing a lot to support the community, the Greek American community, and keep Hellenism alive in Astoria, New York. George Dulles and Gus Sobropoulos. George, tell us a little bit about the history of Greek Americans in New York, Astoria, New York. The, the big influx of the Greeks was in the 60s. And it, it's a funny story, but when the Italians started coming here in the 30s, the, the Irish, the English who were here, they were saying, there goes the community. And when the Greeks were coming here in the 60s, the Italians were saying, there goes the community. I mean, it's a, we are a very diverse community. We have 124 nationalities living here in Astoria, and that's according to school records. And when National Ge Geographic came, they picked this community because we are the most diverse community in the world. And they, they were set up right here on this corner here, and we were stopping people. Where are you from? Costa Rica. Where are you from? Yemen. I mean, unheard of. Yes. But these people from all, and we all get along. Yes. And if you go to Steinway Street, 28th Avenue, it's all Arab. It's beautiful. Now, Gus, you're the new generation. You, you, you grew up here. Tell me a little bit about how it was growing up in Astoria and, and how it's kind of changed. Well, when I was growing up, I just lived a, a block or two away from here. And where we're standing, this was probably my first job. It was a restaurant called Galini. I was 11 years old uh, doing uh, busboy work. But this Astoria area was always home to the Greeks because it felt connected because there were so many Greeks here that we can communicate with one another. Remember that when the Greeks were coming here, they were they, this was their first language. They didn't know English. So they were communicating among each other and they were able to survive that way. And, and they kind of moved, they, they came to specific pockets in Astoria because there were different pockets. It was the Italians, correct? There was Germans. Uh, the Greeks came to mostly, which which are the streets that were kind of blocked off of the Greeks? Well, of course, Dimas. Dimas is very, very Greek. 23rd Avenue to me is the, the Greek Avenue. The, the St. Demetrius goes way back to 1911. There was a pocket of Greeks here who planned St. Demetrius Church. They also lived here on Newtown Avenue, which is where we grew up. I originally grew up on 34th Street and 30th Avenue, across the street from the Mediterranean store when it first opened. Mediterranean store is a, uh, you know, a beacon, a Greek supermarket. It's very famous here in Astoria. But, but uh, it was St. Demetrius that drew a lot of Greeks here to Astoria because my parents, we, we, we moved to Hell's Kitchen from Greece. My father became a super and a, a, a hair cutter in, in, in uh, 46th Street, West 46th Street. And then... Why did the Greeks come out to Astoria? I mean, they all kind of left and came out to Astoria. Well, my parents... From Hell's Kitchen, from the Lower East Side, from yes. some upper... The, the church, the church was here, and there was a Greek community here, so they were able to communicate with other Greeks here. And that's, buy homes. And buy homes, and that's what they wanted to do. My parents' dream was to buy a home, and they saved their money, and we bought a house here on Crescent Street. That was our first house. So tell me a little bit about how was Astoria then? I mean, you could drive around. I remember also growing up in New York. I'm, I'm not from Astoria, but we, when we would come here, every store had a Greek name. Yes, they did. They, 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 the Greeks are business people, and they run a very good... Right here across the street, most of these businesses are Greek-owned. And, and they, they, when I came here, I was fascinated by uh, the story. You felt at home. It was your community. I felt, I felt at home. People were talking Greek in the streets. Yes, totally. I mean, in, in Hell's Kitchen, it was all the Irish, and they used to call me Grease Ball and Spaghetti Bender and anything else you can think of. People so, the Greeks. So it was nice to come to a community where you were accepted. Now the new generation, Gus, are they speaking Greek? Are they keep are they are they keeping it Greek? I, I believe they're keeping it Greek, but I think they're keeping it Greek in a different way. They're keeping the roots Greek. They're supporting Greece. They're supporting Greeks here. We just have to keep the language alive more because we're prone to speak English first uh, and then Greek second. But I think we can, should continue to support the Greek language. Now, another big history of Greeks is the diner business. Yes. Okay, and there was a lot of diners all around New York. They took over the diner business. 
Uh, are they are they taking over? It's a new generation taking over the diner business, or they don't? They opted out. They became. I think uh, the diner owners, uh, at, at least their kids, uh, inheriting the business. I think what they're doing is that we've become the Greeks have become real estate developers, and I think the new business model is not so much diners, but it's how to convert and maximize the re real estate space. In other words, well, how we much, owned a lot of real estate, and we, so they owned a lot of real estate, but now they're going vertical. In other words, how much can we build on this? And then this way, they, not only the Greeks are creating jobs by construction, but they also, you know, occupy the ground floor to continue to give more jobs and provide housing. So when we first came here to the United States, into Astoria, we needed a home. And now we're providing homes and businesses and work and employees. So you could see how we evolved from like we were struggling to success stories. To, to, to helping. So they're helping. You're, the Greeks are giving it back. George, uh, on the housing uh, uh, topic, you did a lot for the community you worked for, the city. Tell us a little bit about how the zoning changed here. How was it then? Because we see a lot of wonderful classic buildings, and then amongst those, you see these really high rises. The, popu the population is changing here in New York City, and it's been growing, especially back in the 80s. City planning, who makes all these predictions, predicted that the uh, populations are growing in New York City. We had a huge influx of immigrants. So you change the zoning to permit so new more development, new, new, new immigrants. So you, you change the zoning to permit more development. Uh, I uh, Down on the waterfront, I changed the zoning there to R7 from M1, which was manufacturing, to R7, which permits 30-story buildings, which are being developed right now. Because I wanted to see the waterfront utilized. And uh, with the community board, we sat down and we made plans. 21st Street, we upped the zoning there. We up the zoning on 31st Street with the city council and city planning. So, you know, that's that's what happens. Right. And now there's some there's new uh, uh, water taxis. I mean, I mean, the story is exploding. Long Island City is exploding. Whoever had property here, tell me some about some of the landmark buildings and landmarks that are still here. Is it the Crystal Palace is is closed down, but now the gym uh, club fitness is there, which I'm, I was happy to be part of helping. Uh, the Calamaris family out with, um, that's still, a, you know, a, a landmark. Yes, uh, and a lot of these uh, landmarks in Astoria is like this one here. This, this is like a, a flat iron building. If you look at it, it's like a, like it's like a slice of pie or a. So a, this was like a landmark iron. building. What was here? It was, uh, it was, it was actually a Greek tale. It was on the corner. <laughs> there was a Greek shoe repair guy. There was a Galini restaurant. There was a Greek uh, driving school. Uh, and there was also a uh, Greek tutor upstairs. So everything was Greek about this. And so what buildings are left? So it's the what buildings are left that are kind of the, the oldest. The oldest residence in New York City is right here. It's called the Lent Repellier Home. It belonged to. They were the servants of the Rikers family, Rikers Island, and it's right here on 78th Street and 19th Road. It was built in the 1600s. And we have the Lawrence Family Cemetery on 35th Street and 20th Road. The first body went in there in 1658. And we have the Steinway Mansion, which was built before the Civil War. Beautiful mansion. It was built by a guy named Benjamin Pike. We have the Steinway Piano Company, which Henry Steinway started. And uh, it, they were originally in Manhattan. And he came here to Astoria, built homes for his workers so they could walk to the factory, which was right nearby. So you have a lot of landmarks here in Astoria. Well, Astoria is a special place. And now you're going to take me to see a wonderful other new landmark, Athens Square Park. And here we are. The replica of the Oracle of Delphi. Here is here are the three famous columns, but they're not in Greece at the Oracle. They're right here in Athens Square Park in Astoria, New York. In Tell me about this. In the heart of Astoria. In the heart of Astoria. These are a white granite. It's the whitest granite you'll find. The stone comes from the state of Georgia. They were fashioned in Rhode Island. We wanted the Arts, the, the Athens Square Committee wanted concrete. The Arts Commission said no, solid granite. So they ended up costing us $309,000. But the granite will last forever. 
Tell me a little bit about the architect who fashioned it. The guy was Tomatios Licos. He was the architect who did Athens Square Park. He designed it and he designed where the monuments would be and stuff. And the monuments are separate, uh, the, you know, different sculptures and artists did them. But Samatios Likos, he designed he that. Designed Who made the choices of which work would be here? And, and the replica of the, of the oracle, uh, the temple, these three that are standing, left standing, who made those decisions? And why did you choose the uh, person, piece of antiquity? The person who did everything and made everything happen was Dennis Cintilas. He uh, was one of the greatest people you'll ever meet. His heart was in what he was doing. He had a great idea to do Athens Square Park. We had a meeting at this little restaurant right down the, around the corner there called Taigetos with Peter Vallone. And Peter Vallone was the speaker of the city at the time. He was a very, very powerful man. And Vallone opened the account. He says, hey, I'm going to open the account for Athens Square Park. This was handball courts. So, We said we would make Athens Square Park right here at handball, this. It was handball courts and the monkey bars. Yeah, it was monkey, also bars, the monkey bars, yes. Bars, it was, so there was just a regular park. Yeah, and was, then yeah. Peter Vallone made it happen. You, Dennis Satilas, and Peter Vallone. Well, I was the community board manager. I wrote it all up. I put it in the budget. And to my shock, we got money. And a lot of money. Congratulations. But that was because of Vallone. Now, Gus was here. Younger, at a younger age. I was a younger age. I used to go to school right here at Public School 17. And I remember that there used to be monkey bars and a handball court here. And a lot has changed since then. And you could see now it's become it's become a famous destination, right? Where everybody wants to perform, everybody wants to sing, everybody wants to act, everybody does playwright, they do movie nights. They do yoga. We've they done do, everything. We've done everything. Yeah. I we think that's, that, that's, and that's the spirit of, of the Hellenes. This is what they wanted, the arts, the mind, the body, the soul. Yes, we even got to a point where we do a tree lighting experience now. The tree lighting also happens here every year. Let's see Athena now. Yes, absolutely. That's a great story. piece of work was supported by Dimitri Avramopoulos, who was the mayor of Athens at the time. It's a beautiful work. She is an exact copy of the Athena found in Piraeus in 1956. She was the goddess of love, wisdom, and war. She didn't make war, but she consoled the troops. And here she's consoling the troops. And in her right hand, she's holding either a sword or a spear. And you see the little vipers on her lapel? They were, they, are, they, they were the figures of wisdom. So she's a beautiful work. Mayor Giuliani and Dimitri Avramopoulos did the unveiling of Athena in 98. A beautiful work. Unforgettable day. Here we are, Socrates. Socrates. He was uh, fa uh, 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 fashioned by a guy named Fudakis. He was a uh, he's a sculptor and a teacher in Michigan State. And we had a contest, and he he uh, sculptured this, and we liked it, and we picked it. And he's sitting on a modern slab. It's a, quite a story with this. The Arts Commission wanted a a very modern work. We wanted a classical work. So we compromised. The base is modern and the, the work is classical. And we unveiled him in May of 93. Dave Dinkins was the mayor. And Dave Dinkins put us on the map. I went to Dave City Hall. Dave Dinkins put, put us, Athens Square Park on, on the, the map. map. And I went to City Hall to see Dave Dinkins because he wasn't responding to our texts and my fax, rather. My fax, my phone calls. So when they How could you not respond to, to, to Mr. Dallas? You know, and I, I have an aggressive side to me. And I stopped him. I said, Mr. Mayor, you gotta come <laughs> to Hatton Square and do this unveiling. Good, good for you. <laughs> and uh, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. And he came, and with the mayor came the commissioners, the parks people, the park, everybody so was So you there. opened, this was the first statue in first, Athens Square Park, Socrates. Monument. Who's your favorite philosopher, Gus? 
Socrates. Socrates. Socrates it is. Let's see the rest. And here we are in front of one of my favorite philosophers, Aristotle. He was the student of Plato and, of course, the teacher of Alexander the Great. Tell me about this wonderful piece of work. He was also a great scientist. Aristotle was the very first person who said that the Earth goes around the sun and not the other way around. But one night, I was invited by the Thessalonian Society to have dinner with Vasilis Vasilakis, who was the governor of northern Greece. And then we came right here. We're standing right here. And he says, oh, tell not up Titi Platea Pocanite. So he came and we're standing right here. He says, anything I could do for you, I'm with peace. <clears throat> I said, yes, you could get us a bust of Aristotele. But see, like he says, I said, you go to the University of Saloniki, the students know, know what to do. You won't believe it. Good for you. The students did this. The base was donated by Jack Bucaleri. The Athens Square Committee had no money. We were so broke. I called Jack. Jack says, I'll take care of it. Don't worry, it won't cost you nothing. And he did this base, and what a beautiful job. Beautiful base. Thank you, Jack, to our, our, our neighbors there, the Italians. And we are standing right in front of the famous seal of Alexander the Great and his father, Philip II. Right here in New York, in Astoria, Athens Square Park, we also have the symbol of Northern Greece, Macedonia. This was the center of uh, the Macedonian Empire. Dennis Cetilas insisted that we put the star of, of Alexander here, and he insisted, and we got it. <laughs> and, and when Dennis came and it was done, he was dancing around, he was dancing all over the place like a wild man. <laughs> I thought something happened to him, but I've never seen him so happy. Uh, another important point about this park is that we, in 2004, Mayor Bloomberg had reached out to us when New York City was bidding for the, the, uh, the Olympics. Now, Astoria Park was, they're going to use it for the uh, pool, uh, they were going to use it for the marathon, they were going to do a lot of activities here in New York City for the Olympics. They reached out to us, they wanted to use the park so they can light the flame. Why? Because Mayor Dinkins has put us in the map and it's reached to the point where it's been known to the world to, to establish the, the Olympic flame to be lit. A piece of Greece in Astoria, right here at Athens Square Park. All the Greeks around the world, if you visit New York, you've got to come to Astoria because this is little Greece far away from the homeland Greece. We had a great day today here in Astoria, New York. I just want to thank you guys for touring us around. And we're very excited because I want you guys to look out for uh, Gus Lombropoulos and George Zellis. They're going to be doing a community show uh, in the fall for New Greek Television. Thank you. We'll see you guys again next time on In the Spotlight.